You may not use Word's change case feature very often, but when you need it, it's exactly the tool you need to save minutes or hours of mindless work. Let's say we've inherited a document with a few paragraphs of text that are all in capital letters. This is a format that doesn't fit well with the rest of the document, but beyond that, it's very hard to read all caps, and it looks unprofessional in a Word document, even if it would be fine in a database report or as labels in an Excel spreadsheet. So we don't want to have to retype this, but the current case of this text doesn't work for us. Let's choose the Change Case drop-down list, and we have five choices here. The fifth choice, Toggle Case, simply takes every capital letter and turns it into a lowercase letter, every lowercase letter and turns it into an uppercase or capital letter. So that's not much help. The text here is sentences. Let's convert this text to sentence case. And you'll notice that at the start of each sentence, the first word is uppercase, first letter. So this is pretty nice looking. I would, however, like, for example, the word insert here for insert tab to be capitalized. So I can choose capitalize each word. And here again for home tab. So I can use the change case tool to quickly reformat the case of this text so that I don't have to retype it. Let's take a look at another example of when I might want to use change case. I have a Word database filled with names and addresses, and they're typed just the way I want to use them to be able to do mail merge, for example. But they're not the way the post office would like to see them. The post office would like to receive mail addressed in all caps. So how can I quickly create an all capital letter address block for use on an envelope? And the answer is that I can select it, choose change case, and select uppercase. Finally, here's a title. And this title I'd like to have mostly be with the first letters capitalized. So I'm going to capitalize each word. The word by doesn't need to be capitalized in this context, so I can select it and say that this word is in lowercase. So without doing any retyping, I've been able to change the case of this paragraph, this address block, and this title, and save myself the time that I would spend retyping. Not only that, I save the possibility that I might make a mistake when I retype the text. Subscripts and superscripts are not exactly case, but they're similar. With subscript, what we have is a number or letters that appear below the normal line of text in a document and are usually also a bit smaller. Superscripts appear above the normal line of text in a document and are also downsized in terms of the font size. So we'll see superscripts in mathematics, to the power of, three cubed, that sort of thing. And we'll see subscripts largely in chemical formulas, like the formula for water, H2O. So let's take a look at how we can quickly create subscripts and superscripts. You might think that you need to change the font size and the font position, but you really don't. All you need to do is select the two in E equals MC squared and say, let's make this a superscript. And it's automatically made smaller and put above the normal line of the font. The same with the chemical formula of water. I can select it, choose subscript, and immediately turn that H large 2 O into something that looks more like a chemical formula. Notice that these are toggle buttons. If I want to change this to back, all I need to do while it's selected is click again on the subscript button. If I want to change this to back, I can click again on the superscript button. I can also open the font dialog box and turn subscript and superscript off using the check boxes here. With Word 2010, you never need to retype text that's all in the wrong case. Don't forget that you can always convert its case using the Change Case feature, saving yourself lots of time retyping. And it's easy to create subscripts and superscripts in order to have part of your text more closely resemble the chemical formulas or the mathematical formulas that you're referencing.